Hi and welcome, I'm Gavin Lon. This is the fifth part in a video series dedicated to building a shopping cart application using Blazor WebAssembly on .NET 6. So we have completed the implementation of two workflows. The first workflow involves retrieving the data pertaining to the products sold by our online store and displaying the data in an aesthetically pleasing style to the user. The second workflow involves displaying details for a particular product to the screen in response to the user clicking on a card representing the relevant product. In this video, we'll create the functionality whereby the user clicks the Add to Cart button, which is available on the screen where details for a particular product are displayed. This button click action will result in the relevant product being added to the user's shopping cart. After the user has clicked the Add to Cart button, the user will subsequently be navigated to a screen that displays data pertaining to the products currently contained within the user's shopping cart. For content like this and much more, please consider subscribing and please ring the bell so as to be notified of future content. If you like this video, please hit the like button and please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, I've included a link to my Buy Me A Coffee webpage. Any support is greatly appreciated. So let's get started. So let's first implement the functionality for the server-side code. So let's go to our project that contains the functionality for our Web API component. In the second part of this video series, we implemented the repository design pattern for functionality to handle database interactions regarding the products sold by our online store. So we now want to create the code for handling the database functionality pertaining to the shopping cart. So let's create an interface that contains the method definitions for the shopping cart repository class that we'll create once we have created its interface. So let's create an interface named iShoppingCart Repository. Let's create a method definition for a method named addItem. As the name suggests, the code that we'll implement for this method will add a particular product to the relevant user's shopping cart. Let's add a method definition for a method named UpdateQTY. When a user first adds a product to the user's shopping cart, the quantity of the relevant product added to the user's shopping cart will be one by default. The implementation for this method will involve updating the quantity of a particular product that is currently contained within a user's shopping cart. Let's add a method definition for a method named deleteItem. As the name suggests, the functionality for this method will involve removing a particular product from the user's shopping cart. The getItem method will contain functionality for retrieving data regarding a particular product that is currently in the user's shopping cart. The getItems method will contain functionality for retrieving data for all the products that are currently in a particular user's shopping cart. So let's create a class named Shopping Cart Repository. Let's write code to implement the I shopping cart repository interface that we have just created. Let's position our mouse pointers appropriately and press control period in order to bring in the appropriate namespace. 
i.e. where the iShopping Cart repository interface resides. Let's press control period and generate the code stubs for the method definitions that we included within the iShopping Cart repository interface. So in this video, we are going to implement functionality for three of the methods that we have defined within the iShopping Cart repository interface, namely add item, get items, and get item. Before we do this, let's create a constructor. Let's add a parameter to our constructor that is of type shop online db context. By including this parameter, we are indicating to .NET that we want an object of this type injected into our shopping cart repository class at runtime. We have already registered the shop online db context type for dependency injection. The shop online db context type is the EF core database context object that is used for handling data manipulation and data retrieval functionality in relation to our application's database. So let's implement the functionality for the add item method. Let's first write a link query that ensures that the product that the user is attempting to add to the user's shopping cart exists in the products table. So if the item returned from our link query is not null, we want code to execute that adds the relevant product to the cart items database table. This denotes that the product has been added to the user's shopping cart. So let's implement the code to add the item to the cart items database table. Once we have called the add async method, we must also remember to call the save changes async method. Then we can write code to return the entity that has been successfully added to the cart items database table, like this. If an item is not successfully added to the database, we want code to execute that will return null to the calling code. So in order to avoid a product being added twice to our user's shopping cart, let's implement code that checks to see if the relevant product already exists within the user's shopping cart. Let's implement the code for this in a private method that returns a Boolean value. Then we can use the private method we have just created like this to perform the relevant check. So we have ensured that only one instance of a particular product can be added to the user's shopping cart. Please note that the user will be able to purchase more than one instance of a particular product by appropriately modifying the QTY or quantity field. We'll implement this at a later stage. Let's implement the code for the get items method. Let's write code that returns the results of a link query pertaining to the products currently stored within the user's shopping cart.
then let's write code for the getItem method. Let's write code that returns the results of a link query, which is data pertaining to a particular product currently stored within the relevant user's shopping cart. Let's add a controller class to the controllers folder. Let's name this controller class Shopping Cart Controller. Firstly, let's create a constructor that contains two parameters, one of type iShoppingCart repository and the other of type iProduct repository. Let's create two read-only fields to reference the objects that will be injected into our controller class at runtime. Let's of course not forget to register the iShoppingCart repository type for dependency injection. So let's implement the code for the getItems action method. Let's use our shopping cart repository object to return the items currently stored within the relevant user's shopping cart. If no items are contained within the shopping cart, we want code to execute that returns a HTTP response of no content to the calling client. This is denoted by a HTTP code status of 204. So this means the client HTTP request was successful, but no items related to the client's request are present in the system. Therefore, no content can be returned to the calling client. So we are returning a collection of type cart item DTO to the client from the action method. We have just written code that retrieves a collection of objects of type cart item. We want to return a collection of objects of type cart item DTO to the calling client. The cart item DTO type contains additional data regarding the relevant product. We don't have the additional data at this point. So let's use the product repository object to retrieve a collection of objects of type product. We can then write code to join our collection of cart item objects with the collection of objects of type product using a link query and return an appropriate collection of objects of type cart item DTO to the calling client. So let's keep this code clean and implement a link query in an extension method to return the relevant collection of objects of type cart item DTO 
to the get items action method. Before we do this, let's write code to throw an exception if no products exist within the system, because if there are no products in the system and the user is attempting to add a product to the user's shopping cart, well, this won't make any sense. So this means an exception has occurred. Let's write code in a catch block that returns a HTTP status code of 500 to the calling code. So if for some reason an exception occurs during the execution of the get items action method, we want an internal server error 500 HTTP response to be returned to the client. So let's go to the DTO conversions class and implement another extension method overload named convert to DTO. We'll be able to call this extension method overload on an I enumerable collection of type cart item to perform the relevant conversion functionality. Let's go to our get items action method and call the extension method we have just created to return the appropriate collection of objects of type cart item DTO. We can then write code to return this collection to the calling client with a HTTP response status code of 200. OK. Let's implement the code for the get item action method. You can see here that the code is very similar to the get items action method, but we of course are only returning one item of type cart item DTO to the calling client instead of a collection of objects of type cart item DTO. So let's write code for converting an object of type cart item to an object of type cart item DTO. To do this, let's go to the DTO conversion class and implement the code for the appropriate extension method overload.
We can then call the relevant convert to DTO extension method on the relevant object of type cart item to perform the appropriate conversion functionality. Let's write the functionality for handling a post request from the client whereby a user is attempting to add a product to the user's shopping cart. So let's write code to call the add item method on the shopping cart repository object that will be injected into our controller class at runtime. We want to return the newly added item of type cart item DTO to the calling client. So we can call the same conversion code that we implemented for the get item method for this purpose. It is important to note that it is standard practice for a post action method to return the location of the resource where the newly added item can be found. This location will be returned in the header of the HTTP response returned from this method. We can use the create at action method to ensure that we are adhering to this standard practice. So the relevant resource can be found at the URI universal resource identifier pertaining to the get item action method. And we are including the ID of the newly added resource here. And for the final argument, we are including the newly added object, which we have now converted to type cart item DTO. If you'd like to read more about the create at action method, I've included an appropriate link below in the description. And we of course need to decorate this action method with the HTTP POST attribute. Let's run the shoponline.api project through Visual Studio and you can see the new action methods and relevant DTOs are present on the Swagger UI webpage. Great, let's implement the relevant code for our Blazor component. So let's go to the shoponline.web project. Let's create a new service class where we'll implement code that interacts with the action methods that we have created within our shopping cart controller class in our web API project. Firstly, let's create the appropriate interface in the contracts folder for the relevant service class. Let's name this interface iShoppingCartService. Let's create a method definition for the get items method and the add items method.
Let's create a class named Shopping Cart Service. Let's generate the code stubs for the methods defined within the iShoppingCart service interface. Let's create a constructor for the shopping cart service class. Let's include a parameter of type HTTP client as a parameter within our constructor. This parameter indicates to .NET that we want an object of type HTTP client injected into this class at runtime. Let's implement the code for the add item method. So basically this code calls the post action method that we implemented in the shopping cart controller class. If the response HTTP status code is within the success range, let's check to see if any content was returned. If no content was returned, let's return the default C sharp value for the cart item DTO type to the calling code, which will be null. If content was returned from the server, let's return the object representing the newly created shopping cart item to the calling code. This will of course be an object of type cart item DTO. Let's include the relevant exception handling code. Let's implement code for the get items method. So I'm deliberately including an incorrect URI, Universal Resource Identifier, reference here, so that this will force an exception when we run the code. We'll fix this a little bit later after we have run the code that tests how an application handles the relevant exception. This code simply places a HTTP GET request to the GET items action method, and if content is returned, returns the relevant content to the relevant Razor component, i.e. the calling code. Let's go to the product details base class and implement a button click event handler method for the add to cart button. Let's name this click event handler method add to cart underscore click.
let's make sure that we have registered the iShopping Cart service type for dependency injection. Let's implement code that ensures that an object of type iShoppingCartService is injected into the product details base class at runtime. Then our code within the add to cart underscore click event handler method calls the add item method on the injected shopping cart service object to add a product chosen by the user to the user's shopping cart. Let's go to the product details.razor file and implement the code that calls the add to cart underscore click event handler method. So we have started with the implementation of the shopping cart functionality. We have not implemented user registration or login functionality, i.e. membership functionality, in this application. We could implement codes to bring down user-related information from the server when the user first logs onto the system. The information could include the user's user ID and the user's cart ID. So because we haven't implemented login functionality, Let's temporarily hard code the user's cart ID and user ID in a class within the project that contains our Blazor functionality so that we can progress with the implementation of the shopping cart functionality. So in the first video in this series, we seeded the data with data for two users. So let's say that we are going to run the code from the perspective of the user that has a user ID of one and a cart ID of one. So we can now pass in the hard-coded cart ID value here, along with the relevant product ID and a quantity of 1. When a user adds a product to the user's shopping cart, by default, one instance of that product is added to the user's shopping cart. Let's strategically add some breakpoints in the Blazor project and the Web API project and run the code. And let's invoke the functionality for the workflow that we have just implemented in code by clicking a product that we wish to add to the shopping cart. And then let's click the Add to Cart button.
Great. If we look at the cart items database table, we can see an item has been appropriately inserted into the relevant table. Let's test this again. Great. Let's create a Razor component that will be responsible for rendering a collection of product data pertaining to products that have been added to the user's shopping cart to the screen. So let's add a Razor component named shoppingcart.razor. Let's add a base class for the shopping cart razor component. Let's name this class shopping cart base. Let's implement code for the shopping cart base class. So our shopping cart base class must inherit from the component base class because we want this class to be the base class for the shopping cart razor component. Let's write code for injecting an object of type iShoppingCartService into our class at runtime. Let's include a property for referencing a collection of objects of type cart item DTO. This property will be used within the shopping cart.razor file for code that displays the relevant data to the screen. Let's create the code to override the oninitialized async method where we'll implement code for assigning the relevant collection of items returned from the server to the shopping cart items property when the razor component is first rendered. Great. Let's implement the code for the shopping cart.razor file. Let's include the page directive at the top to declare the root template for our shopping cart razor component. Let's use the inherits directive to ensure that we are using the shopping cart base class as the Razor Components base class. So while the shopping cart items property is null, 
and the error message property is null. We want a spinner loading indicator to be displayed to the user. If the error message property is not null, we want the relevant error message to be displayed to the user. Else, we want code to run that displays in an aesthetically pleasing style the data representing a collection of products that have been added to the user's shopping cart. We are using Bootstrap 5 classes for styling the HTML elements in our Razor file. Now that we have written the code for displaying a collection of product data for products added to the user's shopping cart, let's write code that navigates the user to this screen after the user clicks the Add to Cart button. So let's go to the Add to Cart underscore click event handler method within the product details base class and implement the relevant code. So we can use an object of type navigation manager to navigate the user to the relevant screen. So let's write code to ensure that an object of type navigation manager is injected into our Razor component at runtime. Let's then invoke the navigate to method on the navigation manager object to navigate the user to the shopping cart screen. Let's run the code. and an error message is displayed to us. This is because we are forcing a 404 not found error to occur at the moment. We have included an incorrect path to the endpoint that returns the collection of cart item DTO objects within the get items method of the shopping cart service class. We need to appropriately include a reference to the shopping cart controller name within this URI reference. So let's correct this URI universal resource identifier by appropriately including the relevant controller name here.
Great. I look forward to presenting the next video in this series where we'll continue to develop our shopping cart application. For content like this and much more, please consider subscribing and please ring the bell so as to be notified of future content. If you liked this video, please hit the like button and please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, I've included a link to my Buy Me A Coffee webpage. I've also included a PayPal Me link that can be used to support the channel via PayPal. Any support is of course greatly appreciated. A very special thank you to those who have been kind enough to support the channel. It is greatly appreciated. I really enjoy engaging with you in the comments section, so please feel free to leave a comment. The latest code can be found on GitHub. A link to the relevant repository has been included below in the description. Thank you and take care.